What's up you guys, it's Levi here. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Education Channel. I got my fishing hat on this month and you guys know what that means. And this month, I even got a real fishing pole. So that's gonna let me reel in three really big fishing emails to talk about in January of 2020. I almost said January of 2019 and it's February right now. Maybe I'll get this stuff down by December of 2020, we'll see. So for those of you guys that are new to the channel, each and every single month I talk about the top three phishing emails from the previous month. I talk about what the phishing scams are, what can happen to you guys if you fall for those phishing scams and most importantly I teach you guys what to look for so that you guys don't fall for them because you guys don't want to become the bait for the fisherman with a ph <laughs> If you guys are unsure what fishing is or you guys want to know more about fishing, I just made a video just this last month that talks about everything you guys need to know about fishing. I'll put a card up above for you guys to check out and I'll throw down a link in the description so you guys can check it out there as well. As always, if you guys have any questions on any of the content I'm talking about in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And finally, if you guys have any cool fishing examples you want to share with me, I'll post a link in the description below of my email. Email that email address and maybe your cool fishing email will get featured on next month's top three fishing emails of February of 2020. All right, it's time guys. It's time to reel in the first fishing email of January of 2020. Oh, it's a heavy one. All right, so I got this one from bleepingcomputer.com. I'll post the link down below in the description if you guys want to read into it more. Um, basically, you can see here, this email starts out from an interesting person named Hacker. Just the email you guys want to open, right? All right, and then the title starts out as INF January 17, 2020 dot doc, and then it's for whatever your name is. I assume it got scratched out. So kind of a weird title already. I personally, just seeing those two things, I don't know if I would open this, but it gets even better. In the subject, it says, your computer has been hurt. Real scary, right? We have taken over your personal data. If you follow the instructions attached to this letter and transfer us $100, we will simply delete your data. Oh, that's so nice of them. Otherwise, exactly one day after sending this letter, we will sell them on the black market for $10 and your losses can be much greater. Respectfully, <laughs> I love that misspelling at the end. Respect to Foley. So as you guys can see here, somebody is claiming that they hacked into your computer and they're probably doing whatever the F they want to your computer, right? Well, maybe not so, but we'll get back to that later. Oh no, someone might see all of my Nebraska pictures on my computer and the Detroit Lions pictures that I have. Oh, this is terrible. I don't ever want this stuff to be released. Wait, someone will pay $10 to see my Nebraska and Lions pictures? I didn't even realize they were worth that much. That's amazing. What in the potential is much, much greater? That's even better. Maybe my teams aren't so worthless. Thank you, hacker. I'm starting to realize my teams might be worth something. <laughs> oh, and look, the user word, respectfully. How nice of them. They're such nice people for doing such bad things to me, right? Nothing like threatening all of your personal data and being super nice to you at the same time. It makes the situation so much better. So what happens if you fall for this? Well, you'll likely click the link to the attachment and see this. So you'll see this nice little document here that says this document is only available for 
laptop versions in desktop or laptop versions in Microsoft Office Word to open this document, follow these steps, click enable, edit a button on the yellow bar above. So of course you want to see what's in this document. You want to know what you have to do so that your biggest secrets don't get out there. So you smash that enable content while you're smashing that like button <laughs> and boom, guess what? The attackers did the very thing that they said that already happened to you, which didn't actually happen. When you click that enable content button, you get malware on your system that can do whatever the F it wants to your system. And guess what? The attackers probably didn't have access to your system before, but now they do have access to their system and then they'll actually be able to make you pay a fee because your data will actually be out there and they can actually release it. Yeah, terrible, terrible stuff, right? All right, so what can be learned from this situation? We talked about this before. If you see a document that wants you to enable content, absolutely, do not enable that content, especially if it's from a stranger, even if it's from somebody you know. You have to be 100% sure that you need to enable that content because as soon as you click enable that content, if it is not for a legitimate purpose, you're going to get malware on your system that's going to do whatever the F it wants to your system. It can spy on you, um, it can track you via your webcam, it can track you via your mic microphone, it can steal your information off of your machine, they can hold your information ransom so that you have to pay a ransom to access it. All these terrible, terrible things. Never click that enable content button unless you are 100% sure. And you especially wouldn't do it if you had somebody named Hacker emailing you, right? The second point that I want to make on this email for you guys to learn is extortion emails are going around a lot like this. If you're are being threatened with something just delete the email don't take any action even if the attacker does have something on you you put yourself in a terrible position by actually paying them because there's no guarantee that they're not going to post it anyway or decide hey i want to make that guy pay more because he's already paid me once and he's probably going to keep paying me because that information is super valuable at that point, if it is released, there's nothing you can do about it. Delete the email and move on with your life. Most of the time, these emails are a scam and they're fake anyway, and they don't have anything on you. All right, now it's time to reel in phishing email number two. This one's also from bleepingcomputer.com. I'll post the link down in the description so that you guys can check that out. This one is pretending that Microsoft was involved in an Iranian cyber attack. As you can see here, it starts out with the title, Cyber Attack. Microsoft servers have been hit today with a cyber attack from the, oh, I messed up, from Iran government. Not the, from Iran government. So this is getting good already. For your safety <laughs> and your security, we had to take extra measures, <laughs> measures <laughs> to protect your account and your personal data. So <laughs> there's already been a decent amount of spelling errors inside of this email. I think you guys can already tell how it might be a scam. Anyway, continuing on, some emails and files might still be locked on our servers. In order to get full access to your emails and files, you have to sign in again. Not sign in, sign in. <laughs> if you still have problems receiving emails, please be patient. Our support team is working on this issue and we will fix this issue as soon as possible. All you guys gotta do is hit that restore data button and everything will be fine and dandy, right? Well, not so fast, my friend. So, you fall for the scam, what happens? You get this wonderful sign-in page. All you gotta do is sign in to Office 365 here and everything is gonna be great and it'll be okay. Wrong! So what happens, you type in your email address and your password and guess what? The attacker then has your email address and password and they can do whatever the F they want 
with that email account unless you have two-factor authentication turned on. And even if you have two-factor authentication turned on, if you're using that same username and password on other e accounts that share that same email account throughout the internet, guess what? The attacker's gonna try to use that on there and the majority of you guys do do that and the attacker will be able to break into your other accounts as well. So, how can you guys protect yourselves in this situation? Well, the first thing is, is all the misspellings in that email, that's the number one sign that this email is a fake. Because if this email was going out to all these people from Microsoft officially, that thing is gonna be perfect. Microsoft would never send out an email that's not perfect to millions and millions of people, right? And number two thing, if you look at the context of this email, don't you think that this would be such a big deal that it would be in the news everywhere? Yeah, it would be. And if you do a Google search on this, you're not gonna see it in the news, right? So that's number two. Number three, hover over any link that before you click on it, um, once you hover over that link, you'll see that it's not going to a Microsoft web page. It's going to plus.directonedrive.com, not a Microsoft page. All right, so you fall for that link, you go to the next page, and you see this login page. Well, the same thing. You always check that address bar, and as you can see here, it's plus.directonedrive.com, not a Microsoft site. If you're not on a Microsoft site, do not enter your username and password on a page pretending to be a Microsoft site. It's that simple. You wanna know what's even more simple? Just don't click links that you don't initiate for logins or anything that you have to give out your information for. Go to the Microsoft site directly and sign in on the Microsoft site. Then you don't have to worry about falling for a scam like this because you went to the Microsoft site and then you know it's gonna be legit, right? All right, and then finally, the last thing you can learn from this situation to help protect yourself is to make sure that you're turning two-factor authentication on on every single account, including your Microsoft account. I have that in my 2020 cybersecurity resolutions video that you can check out up above and down below in the description. You guys must do this because Having 2FA turned on on all the accounts that support it really protect you a lot if you fall for a situation like this. All right, guys, it's time to reel in the final efficient email. Oh, it's really heavy and it's a huge event. Yes, someone has taken advantage of a bad situation that seems to be spreading like wildfire. There are a bunch of emails going around pretending to be information emails on the coronavirus so that you guys can help protect yourselves from getting the coronavirus. Here's an example of what I found out on the internet from wire.com. I'll post the link down below in the description if you guys want to check into that more. So this email appeared to be going to some type of Singapore specialist, I assume, or coming from a Singapore specialist. <laughs> um, anyway, the title is Coronavirus Safety Measures. Dear sir, go through the attached document on the safety measures regarding the spreading of the coronavirus. This little measure can save you. Use the link below to download and it's got a link to a safety measures.pdf symptoms common problems include fever cough shortness of breath and breathing difficulties oh how informative i'm so glad that this random person cares about my health so much that they're sending information to me about the coronavirus so that i don't get it or if i do get it i know to go get emergency help immediately. All right, so what happens if you guys fall for the scam? Well, of course, you're gonna wanna click on that link because you wanna know more information about this. Um, as soon as you click on that link, boom, guess what? You're gonna have malware installed on your system and it's gonna do whatever the F it wants to your system. Your system is going to get sick itself. It might be better than you getting coronavirus, but still not a great thing, right? You know, this malware is only going to steal sensitive data off your machine, spy on you through your webcam or your video, destroy your data, 
or possibly encrypt all of your data on there and make you pay a ransom to get that data back. No big deal, right? The very same email that wants to save your health is causing health issues after you click on that link. <laughs> so how do you guys protect yourselves in this situation? Well, beware anytime there's a big news event, unfortunately, there's gonna be somebody out there that's gonna take advantage of it. If you get an email about a big news event and it wants you to take some type of action, think before you click, and the majority of the time, it's probably gonna be a scam unless your specialty is involved in whatever the big media event is. I would say 99% of the time, it's probably gonna be a scam and you should just delete it and ignore it. Also, PDFs aren't the only type of attachments that are going to be sent in these emails. Um, there's also been examples of Word documents being used, Excel documents, you know, things that we talked about in previous phishing emails and where you open a Word document or Excel document and it wants you to enable content so you, so you get that macro on your machine that can do whatever the F it wants on your machine. Um, there's also been MP4 files as well and it can be various different types of files. Um, and then you can't see the email address in this video but I'm assuming it's some type of garbage email address. and Obviously, if you're getting stuff like this from an email address that you don't know, or it's it's not somebody that you know, obviously you should just delete it and ignore it because there's a 99.9% .9 chance that it's a scam. If it's coming from somebody that you know, and you really wanna know more about this information, and you wanna make sure it's legit, contact them via another method, via text message, phone, in person, and see, hey, did you really send this? Because remember, email addresses can can be spoofed and just because it came from somebody that you trust doesn't mean that they actually sent that. Um, they could have been hacked as well. So in general, when you see big news emails like this, I would just ignore them and delete them unless you're 100% sure that this email is legit and you've checked with the source that sent it. So I hope you guys learned a lot from my fishing video this month. One key piece of advice I would like to leave you guys before ending this video is always think before you click, always use your head. Your head is going to judge best if you take the time to think before you click and take an action. Use that mind of yours. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this content, make sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so that this content can get promoted on YouTube so more people like you can see this content and help protect themselves from the terrible cybersecurity threats that we talk about on this channel. I thank you guys so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.